Hi, everyone. I'm Li Ming Wang from University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, working with, with Professor Hasegawa Johnson. Uh, the topic of our paper is the word discovery with multimodal data using a DMA HM and DMA hybrid model. First, I will talk about why do we need to do multimodal word discovery? And then I will formulate the problem and describes the model we use. Finally, we will discuss the experimental results and uh, some conclusion and future work. First, why do we need to do multimodal word discovery? It's because most of the practical speech technologies nowadays are supervised ASR systems, which means it requires a large amount of annotated training data. Uh, as a result, it's not applicable to majority of the languages in the world, which does not have enough training resources because they are too expensive to obtain to train the state-of-the-art ASR. So as we can see from the uh, figure from the right, most of the wise assistants nowadays can support only uh, a thousand languages, but they are out of, say, thousands of languages. So what should we do? One approach will be tries to discover word-like units from speech without any annotations. But such an approach, as can be expected, can be quite challenging. Another approach is to discover word-like units with multimodal data, such as images that the speech describes, which is very similar to our work, but existing approach has shown to be still quite data hungry and therefore not applicable to every languages. So, I will take a step back and describe what is multimodal word discovery. So take the scenario, the following scenario. Suppose you are given a speech waveform for an unknown language. And suppose for uh, simplicity, you know the phone labels for the speech. Then how are you going to do to discover the word-like units in that particular language? One approach without any other supervision will be to look at the repetitive patterns in the speech waveforms and use those as the words. But such, it's still quite challenging and very easy to make mistakes. But suppose if we have additional weak supervisions such as images that we know the speech describes, then uh, with much smaller amount of data, we will be able to figure out the boundaries between the words as well as the labels of each of the segments. With this, to make this idea more concrete, we can formulate the problem as a probabilistic inference problem, where we are given a set of phone level acoustic features. Um, and a set of uh, image regions that the uh, speech describes. And our goal is to maximize the likelihood of the acoustic features given the image features. And the, there are two, uh, three types of hidden variables that we try to infer. First is the phone cluster labels for each of the acoustic features. Second is the concept clusters assignment for the regions. And lastly is um, an alignment variable that encodes information about which segments corresponds to which region. Now we are ready to describe our model. So to learn the conditional likelihood, we break the likelihood probability into three components. The image encoder tries to learn the probability of image given its concept class, which 
can be, uh, which is assumed to be in the form of a softmax function with uh, a nonlinear kernel. G. And and speech encoder, which has the same form as the image encoder with a different kernel function edge across different phone labels. And this, although this is a posterior probability, it is proportional to the Leninger probability of the acoustic features given forms. Finally, we uh, can we need a HMA aligners to learn the alignment and form probabilities given the concepts and we can uh, which has three types of parameters uh, the initial and transition alignments and the translation probability to train the model we can use uh, its that EM algorithms um, For the HMA aligner, we can extend the statistical machine translation framework to accept soft concept and phone labels. Um, such an approach can be achieved by defining uh, forward variables and backward variables, uh, which is a variant of the standard HMA algorithm. For the uh, image encoder, we can uh, use gradient descent and take the gradients with, of the conditional likelihood with respect to the kernel functions, which can be shown to have a very clean form as the gap between the multimodal posterior probability of the concepts minus the unimodal po posterior probability of the concepts. As a result, the Suppose we assume the kernel functions is uh, uh, negative square kernels corresponding to a Gaussian distribution. Then we can update the centroids for the concepts using a k-mean style algorithm. And such an algorithm um, has a runtime that's very efficient. Similarly, we can train a speech encoder in a similar way uh, again, we have a gap between the unimodal and multimodal posteriors, and but uh, in the case of speech encoder, the posteriors can be computed much easier as a byproduct during the forward backward algorithm. Finally, to decode the um, uh, optimal concepts, forms, and um, alignments, although it's um, very expensive to decode three, the three hidden variables jointly. We choose a two-step approach to this, uh, to find the optimal alignment in an exact uh, fashion using Viterbi search and using a approximate search to find the concept form labels given the align optimal alignment. We do several experiments on uh, synthetic captions extracted from MS Coco. Uh, the reason we use synthetic data is because um, in this way we can control the number of different concepts to be balanced to avoid a uh, imbalanced data set problem. Um, it also allows us to avoid uh, no uh, concepts that are not present in the images uh, in the captions or words that does not describe any cap, uh, concepts. In this way, we choose 65 image classes um, and 2,541 Im image caption pairs. And for the image features, we extracted the penultimate layer from a pre-trained 34 layer residual network. For the acoustic features, we uh, is we train an LSTM CDC hidden layer, uh, CDC recognizer, and use the hidden layer, a uh, resample to fix lamp as the uh, phone level acoustic features. We evaluate the, our model using first the alignment accuracy, which is a matrix that scores the number of correctly aligned phones and um, to the 
image regions. And several F1 scores used in the standard um, uh, unsupervised turn discovery uh, literature, namely the grouping F1, which scores how much overlaps between phone segments in each of the predicted clusters, and the boundary F1, which scores the quality of the uh, word boundaries, and the token type F1, which is um, uh, scores the purity of the discovered clusters. And here, um, this slide shows the an ablation study of the models uh, when we tried to do image to audio word discovery. Suppose the cost, if the concept labels and the phone labels are known, you can see our models achieves 90% uh, boundary F1 scores and 77% token F1 scores. And when, it, um, when the audio is available, uh, when the concept labels is available um, and using raw audio, our approach, uh, the force line forms approach uh, achieves 55.8 uh, boundary F1 and 32.7 type F1, which outperforms the unsupervised segmental GML approach. Um, and we can see that uh, the false alive phones performs much better in most of the metrics compared to the CDC based features and uh, uh, the sample features, which are, but the resample features use much less uh, supervisions and achieve very similar results as the CDC mean, suggested that our models can be applied when a very little supervisions in the audio side is used. And finally, all in all, uh, when we used, uh, when we trained a whole system end to end, we found that our boundary scores are still outperforming the unimodal approach. Although our token F1 score is not as good as the adaptive and grandma approach, uh, probably because we, uh, the clusters we extract from the concepts are too noisy, but um, compared to uh, only uses the uh, phone labels. And here's an example of our uh, word discovery results. And as you can see, uh, uh, both of our approach is able to align many of the phones of a word to the correct image regions, but tends to generate a slightly fragmented of, um, uh, segments. For example, when the word pizza was cut in between by a, a segment that corresponds to sync, which probably because the, this particular segments has some phones that overlaps with the, uh, the, the word sync. And such an approach uh, is also one of the key limitations because we don't really use any language models. So the phones overlaps can be a very serious problem. So in conclusion, uh, our approach, we propose a DMH, GM, and DNM hybrid models to solve multimodal word discovery problem. And we test it on the synthetic data set uh, in MS Coco. And in the future, we are going to perform a more in-depth analysis of the uh, errors the system makes and try to come up with ways to deal with more realistic imbalanced data set with more uh, image concepts. And finally, we, we need to learn better phone level representation and better acoustic models, uh, maybe using uh, synthesis or cross-lingual multilingual training. Uh, that's the end of our talk. Uh, thank you.